Hello, everyone, and welcome to our All Consultant Firefly Campfire chat. Did I say that right? It sounded right in my head. It was pretty close. Thank you so much. <laughs> So I asked uh, earlier, y'all knew got my goals for today. Oh, hold on. Say that again. It wasn't me. All right. Muted. Okay. Um, I asked earlier if y'all knew what Camp Firefive chat meant, like why we called it that. And so it's been that for years, like what eight years maybe since since firefly was born initially so it makes sense with fireflies in the campfire um but it also is sort of serendipitous because it also makes so much sense with nomads and then even more like from the stars is there is this famous talk that orville gives and um, it's kind of a mantra for us here at Cincy, and it's that um, you can sit with us mentality. So instead of, um, you know, you bring new people to the table and you just make that campfire bigger so that you, more people can sit there instead of having people sit on the outside of the circle. And it's because we're a come as you are culture, which I know that we all really appreciate and love. So. Um, that is why it's Camp Firefly. So let's go ahead and get into our call today so we can make the most use of our time. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, first do just a quick overview of what we're talking about today. We're going to do our little this or that game. So get your hands ready. And then we are going to do some training. And we altered the training a little bit based on your answers to the polls. Actually, we altered a lot. Uh -huh. And so we are going to be specifically answering the top four voted on items today um, based on our expertise. It's not, we're not going to be able to touch on every Every single thing because it's a lot of um, information of what you guys asked but we're going to touch on some highlights okay and then we are going to um, end the call <laughs> okay so um, I just want to do so instead of going through a whole overview of what's going on this month because it's a lot I'm just going to reference you up to the far the collective page right on the very top there's the list of highlights Okay, and that is everything that we know that's coming down to so all the LTOs that are coming like Mermaid and Batman and Star Wars, um, which is going to be huge and all of the other fun stuff coming out like Rainbow Wax and whatnot. So reference that and usually we find those things out on Thursdays. So watch your workstation on Thursdays to find out what could be launching the next Monday. Okay, um, let's see. I also want to mention SFR. So SFR, if you don't know what that is, that is Cincy Family Reunion. That is basically our annual convention, and it can literally make or break, not break. It won't break. <laughs> Never heard of it breaking any businesses. <laughs> Maybe if you don't go, I don't know. Make and change. Yeah. Make can and can we add? Can we like, can we edit that out? I'm going to for sure not edit that. It's <laughs> genuine. Um, so basically, um, gosh, I, just for my example, when I went to my first SFR, we had just moved from overseas and I wasn't going to continue with Scentsy anymore. I had a team of 19 and, um, and I went on a um, incentive trip. <laughs> Okay, go to bed, my love. I went on an incentive trip and everybody were like, you have to go. And I'm like, okay. Like they were like, you have to have to go. I'm like, okay, I'll do this you know, one last like trip because trips are fun. And so I went on this trip. Could you shut that door behind you? Thank okay. you, baby. I love you. I, love I you. went on this uh, trip and came back completely on fire, decided that Scentsy was like my lifelong career. And that fall, my business grew 368%. So remember that number. It's pretty freaking amazing. And now it is what it is, right? And so um, it does, and there's hundreds, if not thousands of those stories around. So 
I really, really urge you, if you can get to SFR in person, absolutely do it. We're going to have lots of announcements here soon. We'll probably have t-shirts. We'll probably do fun stuff. Um, oh, yeah. So yes, be watching yeah. that. If you have questions about it, let us know. Yes. And uh, there's also an event set up too, is going to be our SFR hub in the Firefly Nomad Collective events tab so if you have questions if you if you're looking for a roommate all of that stuff can be found over there that's going to be the hub for sfr perfect and then um so i went live on friday and talked about the new sales incentive for the next couple of months but we're going to touch on it here and kind of um merge it with our this or that game so yeah. So our this or that game, you get to vote. We say two things and you either go say this or that, you know, whichever one you like, you know, high five or thumbs up. And um, because of that incentive, we're, we're going to kind of get your brain going with this game tonight. So just quick overview. You need to sell in the next two months. You have two whole months to do it. Uh, $500 in warmers and wax. And there are stipulations to so make sure you read the FAQ. Um, and then 100 PRV from uh, four of the five categories. Three of the four of the five. Four. Yep. Um, clean. No, I have it pulled up. Why am I my why am I trying to get this off the top of my head? It's like math in public, you know. Don't do it. Sensi fans and diffusers, which include the pods, oils, air purifiers, and replacement filters. Um, laundry, clean, body, or unplugged. And there are again things that are ineligible for it. So make sure you're in on that. So this is high five. That thumbs up. Okay. Candy. All right, so the very first one, if this is your choice, okay, you know, right or wrong answer, would you choose blueberry cheesecake or vanilla bean buttercream? Blueberry cheesecake, vanilla bean buttercream. Blueberry cheesecake, vanilla bean buttercream. Vote. Blueberry cheesecake. Blue edie, edie. Oh, we got a BBB. We got some BBBs. I think blueberry cheesecake won it. All right, next. All right, the next one is, would you, oh, <laughs> I have them back here. I don't know if you can see them very well. Um, summer rain warmer that looks, it's the pink one that looks like it has the water dripping down or the copper cast warmer, which is like the cool copper one that has the flowery flowers. So summer rain, copper cast. Okay, wow, I know your taste now. I love them both, <laughs> obviously I have them both. <laughs> All right, on a fragrance flowers, which is another, un, it's in the unplugged category. Do you like the bell flower or the dahlia flower? Which one do you like better? Bell, dahlia. Bell was okay. the first one, right? The huh? first one that we had is bell. No, no, no. We had the dahlia first. The bell. Okay, uh, I like dahlia. Like, yeah. Yes. The dahlia is the one that has the smaller petals. The buttercup bell is like a bell. Did anybody else read that, get that catalog, the dahlia with the little flower? Like clothing? Nobody knows? Oh, dahlia, dahlia. Oh, that doesn't help either. Y'all will know. Y'all will know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next. Go. The next one is the laundry category. Scentsy Fresh or Washer Whiffs. Fresh is high five. Washer Whiffs are thumbs up. I know it's it's a hard choice. It's a, they're both freaking awesome. If you ever want to drop a tub of washer whiffs while you're doing a live video for your customers, <laughs> ten out of ten recommend you have a broom handy to help clean you up. Personal okay. experience is why I was mentioning that. Okay, uh, I think I'm doing clean. So how about Scentsy Fresh or uh -huh. that's laundry? Oh wait. Uh... Oh, you know, I always put it in fresh, even when I categorize it in my office. Um, <laughs> so do y'all like hmm, clean, counter clean or bathroom cleaner? If you if you had to choose one and you can't ever have the other one again, bat, uh, counter clean, bathroom cleaner. I love the foamy. Wow. Okay, Brittany's with me. Okay. I love the foamy and oh, it's also cheaper. Oh, candy too. Yeah, it's cheaper. I like the foam too. Um, okay, final final is for the diffusers and fans category. Wall fan diffuser, mini fan diffuser. Thumbs up for Mickey or just wall fans. Hi. Nope. High five for the wall fans. Minis are thumbs. <laughs> wow. Man, words are hard. You can't no, you have to choose. You have to choose one. 
I saw you, I saw you Edie, choose one. I'm glad you didn't have the mini wall fan. That would have been real confusing. Wow. The you many know. or the many. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a mess and it's fine. Great. Cool. Okay. So this is to help you kind of get your brain spinning of how you can start to kind of promote those categories, right? So the thing that you guys wanted the most training on or the most votes for the training tonight were like, what daily actions do you take to get high PRV? And um, lately I have had consistently higher PRV year over year than ever before. And it's freaking wonderful. So I'm going to kind of give you a breakdown of what I do. And this has been built up over time, the consistency, right? I'm consistently showing up and consistently doing these things. Um, but I'm always like in my VIP group, that's the main place that I get and collect and share orders. Um, my VIP group, I do a theme every month. And so, you know, I tack onto that theme, but I'm also doing something like um, top selling month, uh, top sellers on Monday, I share, uh, or on Tuesday, like tip Tuesday. So today is Tuesday. Yep. And for a minute, I thought it was Wednesday. I don't know who, I don't know where we are, but I shared the fragrance flowers and I was like, this is a great unplugged option. Um, be thinking about gifts for people, be thinking about teacher's gifts. Um, because it is probably the most giftable item that we carry. And it's one of my freaking favorite items um, just to have on hand because of the giftability. Is that a word? The giftability? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's pretty wonderful. So I, sh I focus on sharing in my VIP group tips and tricks and um, that gets their wheels spinning too, right? Kind of like the this or that, like, oh, I could use it in this way. Oh, I could clean with this. Um, I also focus on a three-party plan every month. I do more than this, but it helps me keep things organized in my brain. So for the three party plans, um, and this is for um, most consultants who are just doing this to earn at least like 150 bucks every month, right? So the first party every month I do is like an online shopping, my general link that I have forwarded for my URL. And it's just my open party link that I have, um, that I post on everything. So it's wickedlywickless.us. That's a whole different training for forwarding URLs, but it's always my open party. That's where I send people. That's always the link that I am sharing so that people know they can go shop on that link. And that's where, how I build up rewards and, and I'm able to um, like get my sent circles for my thank you mail. Um, the second party is a customer host party. So whether they're actually having a party in person, online, on the go, or if it's an unparty where it's just a personal shopping link that they're sharing with their friends or they're using for themselves, or maybe it's a fundraiser. Uh, it's somebody else who is hosting, not myself. And the third one is a focused product party. I like to focus on, like I said today, this week, I'm probably just going to be focusing on fragrance flowers. And I might even go beyond just this week, but it's a specific, hey, here's my fragrance flower party. Here's my desert bloom party. And you can figure out how much you need for that party minimum. But have, when you have a focus, it really helps. Um, it helps for figuring out social media posts. And Candy's going to touch on that later. Um, but when you have a specific product that you're talking about and that you're, you're, you're mentioning to your customers in your follow-ups, that is really beneficial because then that's putting something new in their minds. Maybe they ordered wax and warmers. So me talking about a fragrance flower is something new to get into their hands and under their noses, right? Um, I also send a customer newsletter every week. I have started that recently. There are free options for you to use. So I, I encourage you to look into those free options. I do use a paid service, um, but I didn't always. I've started like maybe six to nine weeks ago is when I started that, but I figured out how it's going to help my business. And I figured out, I figured it out in my budget. Um, so that's why I encourage you to use those free options, but I'm letting them know every week, every Friday or Saturday, what's coming up for the following week, giving them a call to action, whether it's um, share in my VIP group or open your own shopping link. Um, and really, truly, that's where most of my PRV comes from is having those open links that people are just shopping on and happen to share with their friends or just from my follow-up. They go to my open link. Um, following up is really big key to making sure that you stay present and relevant and not just going after the sale, right? People know that you sell Sensi. It's okay, right? That's awesome. How else are you relevant in their lives? Are you sharing books that you're reading? Are you sharing your favorite coffee? How are they gaining that trust? Do they know, like, and trust you 
because they feel like they are a part of your life or do they feel like they are just somebody you're going, that's going, you're coming to for a sale? You know what I mean? You want to be, you want to be connected um, and not just there for the sale is what I was saying. Is what I meant. I feel like that was like it. I might pop in with something later if I remember if there was something else, but I am present. I am constantly um, sharing things and I never go like, I don't, I don't ghost people. They might ghost me, <laughs> but I don't ghost them. And I think that's really important to remember. So if somebody's commenting or liking my stuff, I make sure to stay connected with them. Do you guys have any questions on that? No? Great. All right. So as you know, social media is a great, big, huge topic that we could spend a whole week on and people have conferences for that are week long. So we are going to do some highlights today specific to your business. So that was one that you voted, I think, number two on today that you really wanted to hear about is successfully selling in your social media feed. And it's this really delicate little balance. Um, and some people can do it really well and some people just don't. And you can really see the difference in what their sales look like based on this strategy. And one of the things they want to make sure that you understand that is very important is having a strategy. Instead of just waking up and throwing and see what sticks, um, have a plan. Uh, and, and it doesn't have to be this big, long plan with the spreadsheet and all the things. It can just be as simple as a calendar on your wall that you say, okay, we have announcements or this day and this day. And, and like Ariel said, maybe my Monday, I'm going to talk about this Tuesday's tip. I'm going to talk about unplugged on Wednesday. I'm going to whatever that is, make a plan for it so that you can get it down. So I have just a couple of things I'm gonna run through here, kind of highlights in each of these areas. Um, in general, remember not to compare your beginning or your middle to where someone else is because there's so many factors. And what I'm saying here, for example, if you see Ariel post something and she gets 50 likes and 10 comments, you know, the fragrance flowers or whatever, and then you get nothing. Don't think that you just aren't good at what you do. You have no idea what another consultant could have been doing on the back end or the work that they put in. She could have also sent out that in a customer newsletter. She could have given an incentive to her VIPs that said, if you comment on my thing, I'll give you something. She could have just posted it in her VIP group and told them, you know, be the first to comment. She could have just had a great online presence and had that, um, you know, know, like, and trust game down real strong. Okay. So you can't ever compare because you don't know. So really, if you're going to compare, compare against yourself. I know that's cliche. We see that a lot in the world, but it's something specifically wanted a, a call out um, with this. Um, number two is not expecting instant results. So say you take all these tips in into account and tomorrow you are starting strong. Don't expect that all of a sudden you're going to get orders from a post. I rarely still will get orders that's like directly from a post. It comes from a whole integrated plan. It comes from maybe I posted on Usually in marketing, you need three touch points, right? So if you post in your VIP group and they saw it in a newsletter and then you posted it online, then and on a post, then maybe they might comment and want to buy it. Or maybe the third thing they saw was the newsletter and they comment on that, right? And so it's not going to be instantaneous. Um, if it is, though, that's awesome. Okay, next is keeping on brand. So just... Um, again, we can't harp on this enough. Don't, especially if you're brand new, don't lose who you are just because you happen to sell Scentsy. Okay. So keep on brand. What are those things that people know you for? Do they know that, you know, what car you drive or the, that you own dachshunds, that's what I have, um, or that your, um, your nickname is Wicked, or that like Courtney, you love lemons, or when they see Alice in Wonderland, they think of you, 
what are all of those things? Do you talk about your kids a lot? Is it that you love coffee? Are you Disney obsessed? Make sure that you're still talking about those things because you can leverage those for your business. I took allergy medicine and cotton up. Um, so make sure you're keeping that all in your feed so that there is also a good balance, but also you can leverage those by finding like-minded people that want to do business with you. That helps the, the know, like, and trust you element. Okay. Also the following up, she mentioned there too, but I want to mention it in a more specific instance. So there's a lot of times where we will, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? It's great with Scentsy because they've got LTOs over here and Splash Show over here and all the things. And so we're posting like crazy. And then at the end, we're just trying to like get in the orders and we forget that we can go back to those posts. So if you don't know, you can go back and look at past stories and you can actually see what the votes were on those so that you can make sure that you are following up with those people. Like, for example, I did a fragrance flower day. It expired after 24 hours, but I didn't look and see what the votes were. I can go and look in that history so that I can actually do the follow up. Also, make sure that you're going to every post that you did about something and you were seeing if somebody liked it. It's not to hound them. It's to follow up because a lot of times they don't want to like go. They don't put themselves all the way out there like they just want to like heart it, <laughs> but they still want you to, to check in with them. OK. Next, I want to just talk about marketing real quick. So again, making a plan, it's important that you decide on what that system, that plan might be. So if you decide you're going to do Mondays, you're going to talk about something. Tuesday, you're going to talk about, you know, product, whatever that is, figure that out. That'll really help you on planning your week. And I'm going to integrate a little bit of that third one that you guys voted on, and it's being successful in this business while you're also um, running a full-time job. This is a great tip for those of you that have a full-time job. Also, once, it, once you make that plan, remember you can batch create stuff and you can schedule out stuff. So for a quick example, I had to do a, a photo for a, um, a superstar director thing me to turn in a photo for. And I'm like, I already did all the stuff and got all the ring lighting and got all the things ready to go for this. And I already didn't know what I was going to wear. So I literally had like seven things, eight things in my office. And so I'm like, hmm, photo shoot. So I kid you not, I bet you I took 100 pictures and a bit, like every product possible. And then the next day they announced like the fragrance flower um, incentive and I already had a photo. I'm like, score, so I didn't have to get ready or anything. And everybody's like, wow, you look great. And I'm like, mm, yep, got ready again today. Tomorrow I'll probably get ready too. Absolutely not. <laughs> Did not happen. Don't let anybody fool you. So you can batch create those things, whether it's photos or um, content or just um, batch creating the plan about what you're going to do. That will really help you out um, if you work full time, busy person. OK, um, so on your feed, a couple of things noting here, avoid the hard sell on your feed. Okay, I know some people do it and it can be successful and some of you here might do it, but if you can avoid the hard sell on your feed instead, reserve your feed for the journey, for the exciting stuff. Um, LTOs typically could go on our feed because they are fast, but when you're selling stories, is the place for that and people expect to be sold to in stories. And all of the research shows us with social media examiner, if you don't follow that, you should, that stories are the place that people are expected to sell to. And that is the number one place that I get sales from is from, um, from your feed or from your um, stories. And the nice thing about that is that you have that little thing in your head that's like, oh, I want to keep that on there. Like, what if I'm posting too much or whatever? It goes away in 24 hours. So it makes it just feel like, eh, like if it wasn't the right call, then it'll be gone tomorrow. <laughs> and so I, you feel like you can post a lot more there too, because it just doesn't live forever. So if you're not taking advantage of your stories, the statistics show that the sales coming off the of stories are staggering. And 
those that are selling strictly on the feed, um, people don't love that always. So you can do it in different ways that make it feel a little less salesy. So what I mean by that is people do love when you are sharing the, when you're selling the product while sharing about it in your life. So for example, you know, you have three kids that do had a massive amount of laundry and you have an embarrassing pile on the floor and you are, you pull out a new thing of whiffs, document that because it's relatable and it's funny and it'll get you a sale. It will totally get you a sale that over by my washer whiffs, they have enzymes and they are made of pink salt, right? And like, instead of the used car salesman. So um, the other thing to the sharing the journey on the feed that I want to note it, that I want to note is what I mean about that is make sure you are sharing all the behind the scenes stuff. Say what people really love. They love to be part of that behind the scenes. So Um, Your awards that you get, if you get shout outs on the collective page, screenshot that. Um, Michelle did that last week, got a lot of like awesome job that just that without selling that just made you have brand awareness in your consumers heads, even though you didn't sell anything. Okay, Um, you can do shout outs if you are brand new, your welcome kit. Um, even if you don't have anything yet, your friends or your sponsor or your superstar directors, if something cool happened to them, post about that too. I mean, how sexy is it to be able to say like, uh, my superstar directors on a trip to the, in Norway in the fjords right now, like how cool is that? She earned that. I can't wait to do that. So you can sort of piggyback, and I did that a lot in my early days, sort of piggyback on other success to show people what is possible, even if you haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, people love free stuff. They, so like showing them your rewards or helping you decide on your rewards um, and unboxings. So unboxing across all industries are really hot right now. And so unboxings of any of your stuff is really good. So Facebook Lives, if you hate doing those, you can do them in pre-recorded stories, reels, whatever um, works for you. Okay. Uh, I am going to talk faster. I've just got a few more things I want to say. Stories. Um, Again, sell on stories, but poll. Use that polling feature so that people love to make choices. Again, that's another thing our research statistics show is people like to have an opinion. So even if you don't want their dang opinion, if you even if you've already decided on what it's going to be, still ask them. I have done that so many times where I'm like, I'm packing for a trip. I need to know which thing you think I should use for a scent memory. I'm already on the plane, but they are voting for what I need to take with me. And so it doesn't matter what it is, just get it out there so that they can make a choice because people love to give their opinions and talk about themselves, which is a a really good reason that it's a really not super great idea to say things like my director has challenged me to sell five fragrance flowers today um, or I really try to hit a goal I just need you to purchase tonight those kind of things sometimes that's going to happen sometimes you are going to be really close to a goal and those people that you built those relationships with that know like and trust you they're going to want to buy from you and help you but that's not how to consistently run your business through begging through guilting that makes you feel icky it doesn't make them want to ever join your team because then they know that they're going to have to do that and they don't want to do that so everything that you do everything that you post try to remember to ask yourself if my potential new recruit group is watching this right now, does that make her want to do this too? Or if my customer is watching that right now, does that make her, does that ostracize her because I just spewed my political beliefs everywhere or whatnot? We want you to be authentic, but also remember that your brand is now tied with the Scentsy brand and it will make a difference on um, how neutral that you can be 
when possible. <laughs> um, okay, so on post, just a couple quick things. One, avoid lingo. So try not to use like book a party. Okay, book a party. People could meet, that means something different to all kinds of people. Before I joined Scentsy, I didn't even know what sales was and I would not have known what book a party I just feel like I don't want to do a party. It sounds like a lot of work. So use different verbiage, like let's collect some friends orders. Let's whatever it is that you want to use. Just try not to use that lingo. Um, the join my team, that makes it all about you when it should be all about them. So try to avoid that one. Um, my director challenged me. It's just a personal pet peeve. I see it done all the time. There's nothing real, real wrong with it. But again, it's not about the consumer at that point. It's about you. It's like, I want you to help me <laughs> when in actuality, it should be you should be helping the consumer solve the problem with the product that you have versus them just helping you reach one more um, award. Okay, um, don't beg guilt or ask. Okay, I already talked about that one. Okay, using accessory posts. I talk about this one a lot, but when we are talking about like different LTOs that are about to happen, do accessory posts, which is again, helping that brand awareness. So you know that Star Wars is going to this month. So you can go ahead and start doing stuff like if you have anything Star Wars, like I have this, I should post a picture tomorrow with Scarlett holding this, saying like how much she loves her sweet little uh, Leia and we got it when we we're at Disney and it's so special. And then, oh, voila, we have a, a Leia that I'm going to post about in a week and they're going to remember and they'll be like oh how cool like she was saying she wished this smelled good and now it does right so accessory posts like watch Star Wars movies and post about it if you have any Star Wars things post about it make a Star Wars themed meal like whatever it is um, same thing with Batman or Little Mermaid uh, if you see something in the store any of those kind of things are accessory posts because it's keeping it top of mind, top of that brand awareness without you actually doing the selling. So you know how I told you like marketing is like in the, the magic number of three. So that it counts as one of those three, right? So in instead of like having to do a mail and a newsletter and a post, it's like I did that accessory post and then I did that. That counts as one of those things, totally counts. Okay. Um, I mentioned this again, I'm gonna say it real quick. People love the funny, the relatable stuff. Um, anything like gross, anything that you've got to clean and you know, your dirty kids, like every freaking mom that is our number one demographic relates with those things. So um, use those moments to your advantage. Um, let's see, also quickly the like behind the scenes stuff, but also any series that you can create that meshes with your brand. Um, Susan, one of our uh, superstar directors, one series that she did in the very beginning was so cool. She's like a health fitness person. She was making recipes for like blueberry cheesecake, um, like healthy ones, but she was tying it with a product. And it was so freaking brilliant. Um, I have a friend, Akilia, who um, is like big movie Hollywood star, like kind of buff and so she does a this or that and Achillea Thursday this or that and she like pits two like hot guys against each other she's like 500 comments or something every time which helps her algorithms and then you know she could do all kinds of stuff like fun stuff with that with her brand so remember you can do different series that kind of tie in your interest um, together and help you leverage what you already love in your life and the people that already know like and trust you um, for your business the last thing I want to notice or that I want to note that everybody loves your favorite topic is compliance um, I'm only mentioning it because I know some of you that might be watching here on the replay don't post stuff on social media because you're scared of compliance. So I want to just say, in general, compliance is there to protect you, especially you. OK, if it wasn't there, it would be it would be a mess. And since you would probably no longer exist. And it's because we would one up each other all the time on the stuff that we would give out on social media. You would never get a sale 
for in stock stuff because there's always somebody that's going to have more or something better. You wouldn't have loyal customers because they would always just be following who has the best deal, the best sell, the most stock. So it's there to protect you. So just in general, um, you can't post your stock because of that. You can't personal specials because of what I just said. Um, and then for, for Disney and licensing stuff, you can't post on those Disney fan pages because if we could, then everybody would, which would then mean that it wouldn't do anything for your business anyway, except make everybody hate us. So that's the reason for that. Everything has a real logical reason um, behind it. Um, no pay to play. So you can't do, it's, it's not only a sensi rule, it's a rule in most states where you're saying if you buy a product, you get entered to win something. That's pay to play. So that is a, something that the Federal Trade Commission watches really, really close. And you could get in trouble like legally and with the FTC, we could get in trouble. So that's um, that's a big one. So again, there's so much more. That was a few highlights. I probably took a lot of time and I've talked really fast. Do you have any questions? Um, I remembered what I was going to say. Uh, we were talking about mail. I send mail every month to my customers. I have a system set up and I've tweaked it over the years and I've even just changed it again this year. Um, and I am now committed to pink envelopes. So when people get my pink envelope, they know like, ah, it's Ariel's happy mail. Um, and it's something small and simple, but I always put my face on everything. And guess what? It's not just once. It's twice. <laughs> so that's something else I've done to uh, maintain relevance and like the, the pink envelope and my face on things. They know something's coming to them every month for however many months after they order. Um, so another thing to note on social media, you also want to make sure that you are solving problems. You're not just sharing, oh, this is a fragrance flower. It's great. Or, oh, this is a counter cleaner. It's great. I love cleaning. What problem can it solve? right? What, what solution are you offering somebody? Maybe a problem they didn't even know they had or didn't think about since he being able to have that solution. Um, but you're wanting to like problem solve and, and come up with solutions in your posts, in your um, stories, in how you share the product. Because uh, oh, what was somebody saying? Somebody was saying something about, oh, I was chatting with a team member about inflation. People were worried about inflation and um, Sensi products not being in budget. We have cleaning products. People are going to clean. We have laundry products. People are going to do laundry. And this is the same thing that we faced two years ago when the pandemic started. It was how are we maintaining relevance and how can we help? How can we help solve a problem? We have a solution, right? So it's thinking about things in those terms as well that's going to help you get that know, like, and trust factor and um, be able to sell your products. Um, I wanted to tag on to that. So I don't know if you can see that very well. So um, that's just a piece of happy mail that I sent out um, this last month. And it had the big, the join thing on there. Again, my face. And then it has the enliven the senses, the other stuff here. Now, why I wanted to show you that is because um, there are going to be a lot of examples out there of happy mail that you can do that is going to be packets of stuff that's super fun and super cute, but costs like five bucks a piece. And it's unsustainable, especially when you're first starting out. So these, I literally did it just to show you they, these are actually just printed on photo paper. So these are photo papers. See, and then I did two photo papers and I glued them back to back. So I printed the, their, um, you know, all the stuff that I needed for the postcard back. So to be pretty, which you don't even have to do. You can just write on here, but I wanted it to be pretty and wanted to advertise more. And so I just glued them together and they cost nine cents a piece. So each piece costs 18 cents and it still went out as a postcard. I got my thank yous and I also did marketing at the same time and I got my join stuff. I put a QR code on there. And so you can do stuff um, on a budget. It's all yes, and even free text message, phone call, email people, whatever your budget looks like, there is no wrong solution. There's no wrong answer for saying thank you to a customer. All right, Brittany, you have your, your hand raised. Um, yeah, hello. Um, I wanted to go back onto the 
and Candy was talking about like compliance and stuff like that. Well, I have two things, but that's one of them. Um, I don't know. So recently in my VIP page, I've had a couple of people like request to join my group and they don't have any mutual friends with me. It's not like they were referred to me or whatever. And I click on their page and they're consultants. And I find that weird because I don't know them. Right. So like, is that normal? Like, is it somebody Oftentimes people go around finding um, groups because there are helpful groups that are run by consultants that offer graphics, that offer tax advice, that offer a lot of things. So they might just look at it and think, oh, this is a place where I can get more help, where I can get ideas. It's I I wouldn't let them in. Uh, I don't. It's it's nothing to worry about. Yeah. I usually just decline them. Yeah. But I'm just like, it's weird. It just happened the last two weeks. I've had like three different people or like a friend request from one and I'm like, this is weird. Yeah. Um, it's probably because you posted something really great. Um, that happens if I share something like on like the director share page or something, like all of a sudden I have all these like friend requests. It's like, we're such a like, Oh, anything I can get. Like, right. is there a, is there a shortcut? Do you know a shortcut? Like, yeah. <laughs> give me all your things. And so, yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. So it should be flattering. <laughs> right but I was like are they fishing are they looking for something because they're not even if you're in my page you're not going to find anything that's not supposed to be there but it's just and, weird and for compliance to most of the time um there is a computer program a computer bot that is called field watch that's going out and doing its little bot things and yep. then it auto sends those emails out so don't ever just automatically think like oh somebody's turning me in it's most of the time a bot it has um it, it's looking for words like free and then looking at and making sure your post is you know like the buy one get one free versus like hey right. if you buy this i'll give you something for free um but most of the time it's not consultants gotcha um And then one other thing, I don't know if you guys have any advice for, but my group, I have like 200 and don't mind my dogs. I'm sorry. Hey, 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 stop. Um, we, I have like 290 people in, in my group, but only like a very select few. I'm so sorry. Stop it. Go. They, they see dogs walking outside the window in the front yard and they go crazy. They just want friends to hang out with, you know? Oh, I do the same thing. I see people walking and I'm like, be my friend, you know? Yeah. Um, so anyways, only a select few ever really like interact or react to anything. And I'm getting a lot of people lately who constantly ask me questions about things that I've posted about or have them on my page, but it's almost like, they didn't know or see the post. And so it's kind of frustrating because like for the all is well collection, I posted like, Hey, I can get these bars before you guys can. I'd be happy to make samples. Who'd be interested in samples and got like no responses. But then all of a sudden it launches and they see the launch post and they're like, Oh, I wish I could smell it. And I'm like, (laughs) I mean, I offered it, you know, um, and people that aren't noticing that I have my shopping link on my group page and I have it pinned at the top. And I get asked all the time what my link is. And I'm like, is this just pointless to have the group? Like, I don't understand what's happening because I get asked all these questions and it's right there. Yeah. A couple things. One, I think if you can make the consultant huddle next Tuesday, I think we can dive into that a little bit more too. But just in general, one, manage expectations. So if if you need to set a boundary um, for what, you allow then that gets to be your choice and so if if you have already shared that information then gently just say hey I just shared that go this way teaching them how to fish because if you give them that answer then it's a disservice really to both of you because it's your time and then they never Um, have to learn where to find those things. And that means that they're not doing other things to better their business um, because they're not thinking for themselves. And uh, did you have something, Ariel? Was this, was this in just in your customer group or your team too? No, just my customer group. It's almost like, I don't know if they're just not seeing like my posts, if there's some sort of algorithm I'm missing. Probably. Um, I would just tag him in the original post. And and if it's something like you've got a couple extra sets of the samples left, Hey, I've got three sets left, claim it here and like tag them 
in the post and once they're engaging and interacting that's another reason i do a lot of posts so i don't just post products in my vip group i i post which warmer would you choose or it's it's book month this month we're talking about books and there was a funny meme of if if a kidnapper wanted to get me all they'd have to do is like open this amazing van of books and have some coffee and i'd be in you know uh, so just like and i said what would you be kidnapped what would be in the van for you to be kidnapped and just engagement posts like that and it might take reminders it might take texting people and saying hey i just made this post can you go interact can you comment can you whatever can you tag a friend calls to action will help too but oftentimes it's just algorithms if they haven't been seeing it and if they haven't been engaging it's going to show up a lot less in their feed yeah right and that's yeah. what I'm thinking is happening. And for the rainbow question, I asked and like nobody responded. And I was like, screw it. I'm just going to pick the people out of my scent of the month, like subscribers that I think yeah. would like it. And I just sent them. Well, and then you can ask them to share on, um, share, share and tag you and say, I'm so excited. I got this exclusive set. And then that creates the FOMO of how can I get that? Where can I get that? And people honestly are looking when it comes to your link, they're looking for the easiest solution. And you know what? I, I, used to get frustrated because I have it pinned too. I have it everywhere. I have it on, on everything. I have QR codes. People are right. still going to ask, but you know what? I want them to ask me because I want them to make sure that it gets attached to a party. So part of my perspective is that's my customer service, right? I am there to help them. They are my customer. They could choose anybody else, but how can I serve them? Right. And I don't necessarily mind them asking for my link. That's just one of the things that's like, are they not seeing my group page? Like what's happening? Because it's happening in multiple instances for multiple products and things where people are like, oh man, I'm so glad that I'm, or I'm so upset that I missed that. And I'm like, I posted about it like four times. I don't know what else to do. Okay. I just want to say, <laughs> I thought you were talking about teams. So when I say manage expectations oh. and like teach them in a fish, don't do, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's why I asked the clarifying. <laughs> bad advice. <laughs> if, Absolutely if it's, not. <laughs> it's good advice for a different scenario. Okay. No, my team. Um, I already told you that once. Customer you can go buy the air purifier from somebody else. Go buy. <laughs> my my uh, my team mem or my teammates that either are frontline or downline that are like actively want to work and doing well. Um, they're really good about any of that stuff. Cool. But it's the customer base that's like driving me crazy. Okay. Um, quick thing on that too, people are going to see things at different times. Facebook algorithms are going to show us things that um, people, different things, but in general, we can't ever just blame our algorithms. It really has to do with what we are providing to them. Why would you be there? If it was, if you were in that group, would you want to show up? Would you want to be there? What are you providing to them that they can't get somewhere else? So remember just to kind of do a little bit of self-reflection. If you're interested, I have a whole VIP group worksheet that I created that helps you go through literally everything, T tons of tips and helping you kind of brand it and helping you do some of the things that Ariel was just saying to do. Um, different ideas for how to get engagement up so I can yeah um, I love that especially that. since I just moved and I'm trying to build a whole new like client base too um yeah. I have had probably about six or so people that have bought for me through just sensi.com and chosen me as a consultant in the area so I've been on top of like sending them samples immediately sending them um happy mail and stuff just to try to keep that clientele um but yeah I definitely that, I would enjoy that if you don't mind. Okay. I know I've talked a lot, but I wanted to tell y'all one more um, thing that is the best tip ever. Okay. So you know how on the, y'all, some of you heard it, Bianca's heard it 17,000 times in her life, in her Cincy life. Okay. So, you know, whenever like on the buy and sell pages, the mom groups, when people say like, Hey, I need a Cincy consultant or who has Cincy, the best way, the number one way to get that sale, even if 50 people get tagged, is to answer in a video. So I always will just do a quick video and like, hey, Julie, you know, with my wax or something like in the back background. Hey, Julie, yeah, I would love to help you. I'm right here. Um, you know, I will message you with my cash and carry, something that's in compliance to say. And then I will do a full video of like, 
whatever I've got in stock, or you can do whatever you want and send that to her in a private message. And I swear, I can't even remember the last time I didn't get that sale from that strategy. Video is always going to be king. It's going to be king on social media. It's going to be king um, in videos. That's why uh, reels and live work and um, answering these uh, too. So in your new town, look out for those and uh an answer in video and then incentivize those that tag you too um something else i want to note too if if going back to the self-evaluation of your vip group make it a place that people want to be want to hang out when i did a revamp you know it's been a year and a half now that changed my entire vip group it was just kind of like me talking to myself and then i started what i'm doing and it's a lot more engagement and people want to be there so that changes things too Anybody else? Oh, have thank you, ladies. Sorry, no, I was good. muted. No, you're good. Anybody else have any questions for us? I think her VIP sheet is, it might be in the Firefly yes. um, files. Yeah, that was a tough word to think of. <laughs> Anybody else have questions? No? Well, thank you for your time. Oh, Bianca, are you talking? I can't hear you. It says you're unmuted, but I cannot hear you. Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Uh-uh. I can see your pretty lips moving, but I can't see. I can't hear you. No, but your hair looks beautiful. <laughs> it does. <laughs> You're going to type it in? Type Perfect. It out. Perfect. My sister's calling. I have to decline. <laughs> oh, Bye. I didn't even look at the chat. Was I? Did I miss anything? No, I've, I've got it. VIP sheet. Okay. Yeah. Another great thing too to do, you guys, is use the resources that we've got. There's a lot of great pages to be on. You want to make sure that you don't like go into analysis paralysis and overtrain yourself. I think it's a really great opportunity. Maybe once a week, take a day to train yourself on something and then take action. Because sometimes we see all these videos and like, okay, I want to, I want to absorb and intake everything I can, but then you forget to take that action step. So it's important to train and then take action and then evaluate. And if you're trying something new, whether it's mail, whether it's um, posting in your VIP group, or you're going to share weekly, um, you know, tips or whatever you do, give yourself 60 to 90 days to see results. Do not give up after yourself and stay consistent. Do not give up after yourself and stay consistent. Oh. No, I hear myself echoing. Wow, I sound great. It was just meant to be said twice. It was very important. <laughs> In case you didn't hear me, I repeat it, you know. Um, but give yourself time. That 60 to 90 days of consistency is amazing to see those seeds because you plant them, you know, you water them and you need water and sun and then you watch them grow. You can't just put them in the ground and expect them to be flowers in the next minute. So it's really important. And I know that's like probably the best analogy that we've got. Um, it's so important to give yourself that time and that consistency. Don't give up on yourself too soon. You can get a QR code by right clicking the pics on your PWS. What? Neat. Get yourself a QR code, guys. Am I working now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yay. Okay, I yes. had I Yay. I was right clicking to save the picture and put it in a post and I saw clicks here to get a QR code and I was like, "What?" So I made a whole different sheet like I have one from Mother's Day, join Sensi, um take them just right to my webpage and also to um Sensi Club. And I didn't and it's right off of the 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 page. You just right click on the page that you're on it says create a QR code for this page. Where, where do you, um, where do you see the results? Where's the data at? Is it through like, is it, have you tried looking at the data yet? To track the statistics the on yet? it because I used the uh, QR monkey to track my statistics who's clicking on it, but I didn't even know you could do that. I mean, for, for example, if it's like shop mother's day, since it's such a short window for that particular program, I'm not sure if I really want to track how many, you know, um, clicks I get on that, how many uh, scans I get. So 
if, if it's something you want to track and you want to stick with QR monkey or whatever, you know, QR code program you're using, but if it's a, um, a, a limited time only product and you just need a QR code real quick that you're not going to want to track the scans, that's one option. Cool. That's really neat. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> Today we learned. <laughs> All right, guys, do you have any other questions for us? Do you need wisdom imparted or like you want to bounce ideas for PRV? I also did share a post yesterday. You want to give people ideas and because there are those stipulations where like bundles have to be catalog products only, give people bundle options that are pre-made. And if they want to swap out one or two, let them know what you can swap out within that specific bundle, right? So you can lead the sale if you're working toward earning the incentive which everybody can earn this this time. Like it's a really good, fun way to get different products in your customer's hands and under their noses and for them to try something new and earn the incentive and get that fall winter transition kit. That's going to be amazing. I don't know if you guys saw everything that's in that, but that's a huge business builder. And for you not to have to spend money on it is going to be incredible. Did you guys see the price? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty rad. Really good price. Yes. I was going to look it up real quick so I can talk about it. Beep boop. Yeah. You get the 10 cents bars, the 25 pack of catalogs, one um, package of each of the scented stickers that match the new bars, a transition fragrance test tester set and felt samples. So you can, you know, sample out those bars that you're getting. That's a huge savings. That's at least 60, 70. That's over a hundred bucks. That's probably like 150 bucks. I haven't calculated the value, but that's a big value to be able to earn that. So it's a really good goal to shoot for. And you have two whole months to do it. So split it up half in each month. Or I was telling, who was I telling Edie earlier, focus on one category each month, or I'm sorry, two categories each month in addition to the warmers and wax. Focus on this, do like, hey, let me get you, sell two laundry bundles and laundry's done, right? So That's part of that planning. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, if there is anything that we missed that you wanted to ask, feel free to let us know. Don't forget about next week's um, consultant huddles for your title. I'll send out an email um, for reminders as well, but you are all welcome to those. And there are events in the group uh, if you need reminders of when your- And the dates are, have been adjusted. <laughs> I'm just going to like gloss over that. Didn't the dates I? are correct is what you need to know right now. Okay. All right. Thank you all so much for your time. You have a great night. <laughs> Bye guys.